Hello everyone, welcome to TechSphere. In today's video, we'll see a tool called Airbyte. It's a very nice tool for data migration. Let's say you are migrating data between MySQL or SQL Server to Postgres or any other database. It's very click-based, UI-based tool where you don't have to configure much things. Let me explain a few basics. You can go to Airbyte website and you can have three different setups, Mac, Linux, Windows. So it's available on all the platform. It's a good tool. Then what you need is, let's say in this example, I'm covering up a SQL Server and Postgres. So my destination is Postgres and the source is SQL Server. So on the SQL Server, first you need to enable the CDC. To do that for your database, you need to add changed honor. Uh, you can say change DB honor to SA or the user, whatever you're using, or it should have an owner level access to the database. So I'm using SA, you can use, let's say, data migration user if you are using that or something like that. So you can use that. Then enable the CDC and just try to enable it on one table. So it's always good. And it also requires you to enable at least one table for the CDC. Once this is done, you come to your source and you add the new connection. So it's very easy. You click on new. You can search any number of connections. So it has all the connections. So Instagram, GitHub, GitHub, everything it has. And let's say I'm using SQL Server. I'm searching that or MySQL or whatever you require. So I've already configured it. Uh, you can say connection. So you don't have to. But the main thing about in this connection is I'm using Docker setup. So in this one, I'm using, uh, you can say, uh, ABCTL. And this is a, deploying everything on the Docker, uh, local Docker. So in this local Docker, uh, I have completed, you can say this is a complete cluster setup. You can do it on bigger scales also, like where you can add multiple nodes if you are using Kubernetes. So for this demo, I'm using this. Now, once this is done, from the Docker to access your local host, you have to use host.docker.internal because I cannot access local host directly from, you can say Docker. Within the container, it has its own local host. So there is always a conflict. So you can use host.docker.internal and then other things are simple. So we are using CDC to capture. Uh, so if people are not aware about it, CDC is nothing but let's say your table doesn't have any field to track. Uh, you can say the changes in between the table means let's say you have a field name updated by or updated at, then you can use this one, uh, this particular setup. It will look for the updated fields and all. But let's say if you don't have any updated field, it's an old database. Generally, you won't find. So it's very difficult to track the changes. So CDC is inbuilt feature of SQL Server to enable change data capture. So let's say you have one GB of data. So it will move one GB of data. Let's say tomorrow you have one MB of data more. So only the change data is moved. So it's like constantly streaming that. Once you have set up that, but uh, like, okay, just mentioning again. So if you are using Docker setup again, use host.docker.internal for localhost. Then I have done the same on the destination. Uh, again, host.docker.internal for my host. And remaining things are simple. So I have added a password, username, and also. And once the test connection is done, it's saved. After that, I need to create a connection. So once you click on new connection, you can select your source, destination. Again, it will appear like this. And let me just show you an example here. So I will go into my schema. So already I have synced four tables. So these four tables you can see. And if I run, my data will also be there. Now, Let's assume I go back to my screen and I say, I want to add one more table. So give an example, I will say add orders. So once this is done, I will just save changes. Once my pipeline changes are saved, I will go into this status here. You can see everything has been synced. I'll click on sync now. So sync now will trigger kind of sync for all of them and detect whether there is a change data or not. If there is a change data, it will move that else it will not. And if I go into my timeline, I can see uh, when my last job was succeeded. So this is the, you can say last job time and this sync is happening. I will just pause the video recording for a second, like for a few minutes so that this can complete the sync and then we'll resume it from there. Now sync has completed the data load. So we have all these tables. Now order is also synced uh, and I can go into my Postgres and I can refresh. The sync took a little bit extra time because it's a Windows environment and also the system is kind of uh, my personal system. So not that heavy of machine, but in a way you can sync your data 
in one uh, you can say one go and also ensure it is always in sync so you can add new data and again press on the sync now uh, now let's say you want to schedule this thing so you can go into the setting you can schedule it cro with cron job or you can use it using a gui where you can specify the hours or you can trigger the manual one so these are very simple changes and this is a very good tool and uh, slowly slowly they are improving with the new builds and making it very optimized. So I have a good hope on this particular tool. I hope you like the video. And if you have any confusion or you require any support, commercial support, you can uh, ping me on chat or comment. So that works. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.